Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose. So it seems like Microsoft and Sony has a very similar upcoming strategy that maybe not every fan is overly thrilled about. Earlier this week, there was a big report going around about how Microsoft wanted to monetize free to play games in the future. And well, interestingly enough, now here we are just a couple of days from that. And we're also starting to hear very similar things with PlayStation as well. It does seem like Xbox and PlayStation might be joining forces on this initiative this generation. So we'll talk about that one a little later on in the video. And then we do also have some more Xbox Game Pass games to talk about because they just will not stop announcing these games. So we will talk about that as well. But per usual, if you do find yourself enjoying the video, make sure to hit that like button below as it does help out the channel a ton. Plus go and hit that bell notification and subscribe button as well. That way you can keep up with all of the latest gaming news. Other than that though, let's just go and get right into the news, starting off with yet another Sony acquisition rumor. And I have to say, these rumors are getting out of control by this point. Now, if you've been following this story, Sony has made it very clear that they are looking for more studio acquisitions. That's not any type of secret. However, what seems to be happening as of recent is that every single week, it seems like there's a new rumor about who they're going to acquire. One week, it's Square Enix. The next week, it's Capcom. Then it's Konami. And now, most recently, it is from software. Now, this rumor just kind of exploded online as an analyst over on Twitter by the name of Dr. Sircon Toto did make a comment about current rumored merger and acquisition candidates for Sony. And then he kind of went into the history of From Software. Obviously, according to the internet, From Software has been acquired about six times over the last six years as a new rumor pops up every single year. In fact, there's actually been about, I'd say, three, four different rumors about that this year alone, which is interesting. And I'll kind of get back to that here in just a moment. But yeah, people were just kind of running with the story that Dr. Sakantoto was suggesting that Sony was about to acquire them. It actually got to the point that he had to clarify on Twitter himself that he was not indeed suggesting that. You can actually take a look at his comment here where he said that some people are getting mad at me because they think this thread on From Software suggests I predict Sony will indeed buy them. Amazing psychology or just lack of reading skills. Twitter is colossally entertaining. So there you have it. He's not suggesting that From Software is about ready to be acquired, which really shouldn't be overly surprised. Like, I get it from a fan's perspective because From Software is immensely talented, and we really saw that this year with Elden Ring. But at the same time, from Software is not an independent studio. They are owned by a big Japanese company being Katakawa, and they really have no reason to sell From Software, especially with the success we've seen from Elden Ring. So the likely chances of a From Software acquisition seems very low. Is it impossible? No, I'm not saying that it's necessarily impossible, but the chances of it actually happening seems very, very, very slim. So why this rumor has popped up year after year after year is just flabbergasting by this point. It just is what it is, and I've kind of said it on the channel before, but when it comes to acquisitions, it really does seem like nobody knows what you're talking about. Don't latch onto every single acquisition rumor that you see pop up out there. But at least in this situation, we do have this analyst here confirming that he is not indeed suggesting any type of acquisition. Next up, we do have a couple of release dates to talk about here real quick, one being for Sonic Origins, and then the other one from Digimon Survive. Now, we'll first kind of talk about Sonic Origins as we did get some more details about this game just in general, but it is now set to release on June 23rd for Xbox, PlayStation, the Nintendo Switch, and PC. This, of course, is a retro compilation including Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, which is actually the first re-release we've seen since 2011, so that's definitely nice to see. Then you have Sonic CD as well. So this is a really nice collection here, but unfortunately for you collectors out there, it looks like at least as of this moment, there is not a physical edition of this game. It is only digital for the time being. And with that, there's quite a few options to go over here if you do want to order this game. They actually put out an entire chart here to show you all the different editions of this game, which includes the standard edition, there's the start dash pack, which are for pre-orders, then you have the premium fun pack, the classic music pack, and then you also have the digital deluxe edition as well. Now, personally, I'm all for having more options, but when you have to have a chart like this, it might be just a little too much, but regardless, Sonic Origins will be set to release on June 23rd. Now, as for Digimon Survive, after receiving several, several delays, it has finally got an official release date, this time being worldwide, and that would be for July 29th. 
it will be releasing on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, as well as PC. So there you have it. The wait is finally almost over. And now we're just kind of hoping this game is as good as it looks. I really do like that visual novel setting mixed in with strategy RPG gameplay. Let's go to talk about Xbox Game Pass, though. I know we just talked about this yesterday, but they just don't stop. They just keep announcing more and more games. And after they announced nine games yesterday, well, they went ahead and decided that they're going to announce two more today, both of which are day one releases. Yeah, that's a term that every Game Pass subscriber loves to hear, as it just saves you so much money, and it helps you discover so many games that you might have not known about otherwise. And actually about that, Game Pass might help you discover these next two games here, or actually technically four, but these are some very promising looking titles, the first of which being Loot River. Now, some of you all might actually recognize this game as we have talked about this game in the past. I believe it was at one of those ID at Xbox events, and this is one of those games that I did highlight because it really stood out to me as not only do I like the art and design, but I also think it has a clever gameplay mechanic. It's kind of mixing in these strategic puzzle-based elements with challenging dungeon-crawling gameplay. It's an interesting combination. It's not something that I thought would have worked together, but I think that this one looks like a lot of fun, and if you like roguelike, likes this one definitely looks like a good one and it will release directly into xbox game pass on may 3rd so definitely keep an eye on this one i think that this could end up being a big surprise hit now as for this other one here though this is actually a collection of games being the shadow run trilogy console edition the shadow run trilogy includes games like shadow run returns shadow run dragon fall director's cut and shadow run hong kong extended edition the shadow run trilogy will release on june 21st for playstation xbox and well interestingly enough the Nintendo Switch as well, so do keep that one in mind, but of course it will be launching directly into Xbox Game Pass as well. And if you haven't heard of the Shadowrun games before, these are actually beloved RPGs. They're often considered to be among the better tactical style of RPGs on the market. It mixes in a cyberpunk world with some fantasy-based characters, they got rich stories, and if you do like tactical RPGs at all, then you're definitely going to want to do yourself a favor here and check these games out when they release for consoles, especially if you have Xbox Game Pass, then you can just try this out at no extra cost. Either way, though, the upcoming Game Pass lineup for the months of May and June are already starting to stack up. So far, these are some of the games that we do know for a fact are going to be releasing into Game Pass over the next couple of months, including Loot River, Trek to Yomi, that one's definitely looking really good. You have Citizen Sleeper, Iodin Chronicle Rising, Hard Space Shipbreaker, Sniper Elite 5, that's another day one release. Pac-Man Museum Plus. We also have Assassin's Creed Origins, that upgrade for For Honor, and now with the Shadowrun trilogy as well. Yeah, that Game Pass lineup is quickly building up. Now, speaking of Xbox, there was a report going around earlier this week that Microsoft is building some type of ad program to implement into free-to-play games. It's supposed to be non-intrusive, and it kind of sounds like product placements. They kind of describe it as having ads on billboards and stuff like that. But reportedly, this ad program might release as early as this year for free-to-play games. Now, we've already talked about this, though, so why are we talking about it again? Well, a new report has gone out showing that Sony's plans pretty much align with Microsoft's to a T. Now, this was already kind of hinted at in the past thanks to a patent that was discovered online, but here we're actually getting a yet another report from Business Insider that reveals Sony 2 is building an ad program that, again, might release as early as this year. And based off the report, it almost sounds identical to what Microsoft is planning here, and that is to implement, quote-unquote, non-intrusive ads to free-to-play games. Basically, it kind of sounds like product placement. They keep using billboard ads as an example, but from the PlayStation report, they I do say that the goal is for the ads to appear like they're part of the game, like digital billboards in sports stadiums. Formats could include ads that give viewers rewards for watching ads and promotions for in-game items like avatar skins. However, we have seen some pushback from the game community already, and some people are just absolutely outraged by the notion that some of these free-to-play games could monetize their games by these ads. Now, I will say that I do believe that some of this pushback before was kind of linked to console wars. We know how console wars work online and they're going to use any type of ammunition they can get and because this was only Microsoft reportedly doing it before, that was kind of an easy thing for I guess console war ammo. It's just ridiculous. But now with Sony also reportedly doing this, I I'm kind of curious to see if some of this outrage suddenly and magically calms down because I do suspect that that will be the case as both are reportedly 
doing very similar things here. Now, here's the thing for me, and I said this yesterday, and I said it the day before, but when I look at what is being proposed here, I don't think that it's overly problematic. There's a couple of reasons I say this. One being that it's apparently for free-to-play games. And these free-to-play games, they have to be monetized in some shape or form. Now, they have a few options. They can do microtransactions, expansions, and things such as that. But not every free-to-play game is just some massive success like Fortnite and Warzone and Apex Legends. There's also other free-to-play games out there that doesn't see that type of success. And by having these ads that they can implement into their games, that's a nice and easy way for developers and publishers to monetize their games and if it's true that these are supposed to be non-intrusive ads it's not going to necessarily take you out of the action from the game it's not going to make you stop playing the game and make you watch a 30 second long video rather it's supposed to be done through like product placements which is pretty much everywhere in the world by this point if you watch movies and shows they're all over the place you just don't necessarily recognize them so as long as this is implemented in the right way then it's not necessarily going to have a negative impact on gamers now in the future if we start to see games take you out of the action and make you watch these 30 second long clips or if we start to see these advertisements and big triple a blockbusters then i might come back here and say that this is absolutely awful but what's being described here i don't necessarily see it that way and based off of the results from yesterday's poll it does seem like most of you all aren't necessarily upset with this either again this is for free to play games and that is always something important to keep in mind now, we do also have an update for that Sega Super game that we keep hearing so much about. And we are starting to learn that this is not just a single game, but rather it's supposed to be for multiple games. Basically, it sounds like Sega is planning multiple AAA budget style of live service games in the future. And we're actually getting some detail about what some of these games actually are. I think that this is kind of exciting and then also kind of bewildering at the same time. So what I mean by that is that the exciting part here is that it is being reported that two of the super games that they are working on are actually reboots of beloved franchises such as Crazy Taxi and then Jet Set Radio. In both situations, I have seen fans ask for another installment for these franchises for years and years, especially when it comes to Jet Set Radio. I mean, you all have been waiting for a very, very long time. but then at the same time again based off of what we understand currently is that there's gonna be some live service elements when it comes to these games now i'm not exactly sure how that's going to work with a crazy taxi reboot or a jet set radio reboot now i'm sure that there's still probably a lot we don't know about these games so it's probably best to just kind of wait and see what they're planning with crazy taxi and jet set radio but it does seem like quite an interesting combination to say the least however like i said before i think the exciting part here alone is the fact that it sounds like both jet set radio and crazy taxi are returning once again and it does sound like that they have a pretty decent sized budget as well so i will be very curious to see how modern versions of these games end up hopefully sega will be able to pull this off now, as for when you actually get to play these games yourself, it does sound like that there's going to be a little bit of a wait. It has been noted that the development on these games are still early in progress, with Crazy Taxi reportedly still two to three years away. This also includes two more games, such as an unnamed first-person shooter. Let's go take a look at the poll of the day, though, and we have had a lot of leaks this week regarding Nintendo Switch Online. It does seem like Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games are very much heading over to Nintendo Switch Online sometime in the future, and I do suspect that this will be bundled with Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, which is their premium $50 subscription. The question I have for you all, though, is that if Nintendo includes Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games to Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, would it be enough to convince you to subscribe? And actually, it does seem like a lot of you all would very much be interested in this idea, with 25% of you saying yes, 53% of you said no, while 17% of you all are undecided. So that means that 42% of you all may actually upgrade if they add Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. That is actually a pretty good increase, especially if those undecided come over to the yes side of things. And really, if you start to look at it, you can easily see why adding Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games would be enticing for just so many people 
people out there. I mean, there's some really good games on these platforms, especially with the Game Boy Advance. I mean, they could bring over games like Golden Sun. I mean, I know a lot of you all want a new Golden Sun game, but at the very least, this could tide you over until we eventually see Golden Sun in like the year of 2040. But, you know, beyond that, you also have games like Wario Land. And obviously, and this is the big one here, the mainline Pokemon franchise. This is really where it all began for Pokemon. And if they release the mainline Pokemon games with online connectivity to Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, I think that that alone would have a lot of people subscribing. I mean, it cannot be underestimated just how big the Pokemon franchise is. And even to this day, if you go look at the 3DS eShop on a monthly basis, right at the top, you always have games like Pokemon Crystal sitting right there. And this isn't even getting into other games such as Zelda Minish Cap. You have Zelda Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, and really the list just goes on and on. There are so many great games available on a Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, so this really could be a huge, huge inclusion for Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.